Hey, Master Gardeners, here I am out in a pasture, not very fertile soil, not very well cared for, really acid, and look what's growing, a bunch of daisies. And these oxide daisies, you can find them all out throughout the United States. They're everywhere, roadsides, waste places, a plant that's indicative of poor soils and, and not a lot of competitive vegetation in the neighborhood. But I also have some insect spray right here. So what would these two have to do with each other? Look at the label in here. What does this say? It says on here, active ingredient pyrethrins. So the plant that I'm holding is in the chrysanthemum type family. Can you see that? Do I need to flatten it out for you? This is a Piola product. It's actually a combination of pyrethrin and oils inside of it. But these plants are all in the aster family and that this particular species is not the one that they derive the pyrethrin spray from but there is one that's in um i think it's native to anyway other places in the world is where it's native its name is i'll have to look tanacetum cinerifolia cinerifolum a pyrethrum daisy but it looks like this it's an erect strong stem they're two inch flowers much like this the rays surrounding the disc type flowers so that's a traditional daisy if you've had to ever study botany before, you'll know that all those little center points are all little flowers down inside there. They're composites. The composite group daisy family is a huge family of plants. But this one is the one that they derive this pyrethrum from. And this used to have a, the one, the plant that they use used to be in the genus pyrethrum, but not any longer. They changed that. So it's utterly confusing even to me. But they take the flowers and dry them and the developing seed pods, and they pound them out. And from that, they de derive pyrethrum, which is, which is what we use for insect repellents, which my videographer could use right now because she's trying to swat some bugs right there um, that you can't see. But there's, these are insect drawers, but they can repel insects. And we use them for horse sprays for our animals. We use them for tick repellents. We use them for insect sprays. There, it's, a, it's a nerve agent that we use. So it's an organic product that can be used in your organic garden for control. The nice thing about it, it's biodegradable. That's why it's classified as organic, which means sunlight can break it down and natural organisms in the soil break it down. So it breaks down real quick. But when you spray it, it has instant kill. Like those bug sprays that you get that shoot for 15 feet, that's oftentimes a pyrethrin spray that knocks down that bee and brings him under control real quick. So it's a very effective toxic agent should never be sprayed anywhere around fish because it is toxic to fish. Fish, But for the most part, doesn't hurt any mammals or anything. That's why we use it for tick controls on our dogs and things and on our pets. So a very good insect control. Another bad thing about it is it can cause allergies and things. People, Some people have dermatitis from it when they're handling the flowers and things like that. But a cute plant. And as a little girl, I have a really good memory. I had a Nana that lived across the road and I would always go down to the roadsides and cut these and collect them and go back to her house. She lived across the street. I would throw stones at her second floor window and she'd answer and I would be standing down there with a handful of oxide daisies to give my special Nana, my special memory. So I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about pyrethrins.